Do that though, Queen. Queen. All right, if we can have your name and age. Hi, I'm Esther, I'm 23. Okay, and Esther, uh, you still have your balloon unpopped, why so? Are you done? Oh yeah, I'm done with the rest of that, okay. you know. Okay, now we can talk, right? In a real way. Okay. What is your favorite scripture? My favorite scripture is actually found in my bio. It is Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. And it says? It says, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who lives, but Christ who lives within me. When is your birthday? And how old are you? I'm 23. My birthday is May 1st. What would be an ideal getaway if you and a partner had to do a vacation? I enjoy the mountains, so somewhere in the mountains and um, somewhere where we can just like connect, talk. There's no internet, there's no outside world, outside influence. It's just me and my partner and some good sushi. What's your faith like, life, your relationship with God? My relationship with God is the foundation of my whole being. Because without having that foundation, I would not be the person that I am today. I am not perfect, and I will keep saying that. Because a lot of, you know, my fellow Christians expect me to be perfect. I'm getting a lot of, you're a Christian, why'd you go on that show? You're a Christian, why'd you do this? You're a Christian, why'd you do that? Um, forgetting that God calls us to, once we encounter him, to sin no more. But he understands that his grace is enough. You know, once you sin and you know you sin, the next step is to ask for forgiveness. Confess you sinned and he is more than willing and open to forgive you. If the creator of the universe is open to forgive me, um, why wouldn't y'all be open to forgive me? And I'm saying this because, yes, I know that I have a platform now. I know that. I've always had a platform, you know, but now it's like in a pretty big magnitude for me, you know, because I'm not saying I'm famous or anything. Um, and I know that I could use it for evil or I could use it for good. And I'm not always going to make the right decisions. I'm not. I'm 23. Yes, I will use that excuse. I'm 23. I'm still learning. But all I ask is that you guys please give me grace. That's all. How tall are you? I'm 5'5". Five five. How tall are you with those heels on? With those heels? Those added maybe. <laughs> Which ones? The blue ones? <laughs> the ones you wore on the, on, the, on the video. Yeah? Okay, well, the blue ones were a little taller than the black ones. So here's the thing. I showed up there. I had a plan. I was going to wear the blue heels. Tried them on. Walked on stage. That's where we filmed the intro. I was like, yeah, I'm not cut out for this. Not only was I nervous, but those heels were very uncomfortable because I had just bought them. And um, so I changed into the white heels. And with those heels on, I was probably 5'8", I think. Um, what's your favorite? Are you the spiritual person? I am a child of God because in 2024, spiritual means a lot of different things. So I'll be very specific. I'm a child of Christ. Come spend some safari time. Girl, you are so fine. <laughs> <laughs> I hope y'all can like hear. I hope you're close enough to where they can hear your questions. Probably. Yeah, I hope so. But um, yeah, I would love to go to Africa uh, with you. Probably not because I don't really know you. But, yeah, I plan on going back to the motherland and visiting. I have some family there all over Africa, actually, which is crazy. But, yeah. Who is your favorite musical artist? I don't have one at the moment. I'm a very seasonal music listener. Um, I enjoy Maverick City. I enjoy Hillsong. I enjoy Kiara Shields. I enjoy Sam Rivera. I enjoy Chris Tomlin. Yeah, the list goes on and on and on. For me, it's more like specific songs for specific seasons in my life. Just to be clear, are you single? <laughs> At the moment, yes. Um, have you always been a Christian or did you change into a Christian at one point? 
I was born into a Christian family. I've always been a Christian. Both my parents are Christians. Um, I sang in the choir growing up and then sang in the church choir until I was, I want to say, 13, 14-ish. And then we moved. And yeah, I think that I got baptized when I was 13. I didn't know what I was doing, really. And I got rebaptized again this year in March. Easter 2024. Um, and yeah, at that point, I had built a personal relationship with Christ. So, yeah. And what sports did you do in high school? I ran track mostly. I started running track in fifth grade. And I happened to have been pretty good at it. Where are you from? I was born in Congo. I grew up in Maine. And I went to elementary school, middle school there. And then my freshman year of high school, I moved to the Midwest. And I've lived there ever since. I'm Congolese. So my accent, I think. I feel like my accent is kind of from all over the place. It changes and alters just depending on my environment. Yeah, people were pointing out that uh, on this show, you sounded completely different than you do in real lives. So I agree. No wondering. Yeah. Um, what is using one word? What can you use to describe what love means to you in one word? One word. Christ. How are you? <laughs> um. I'm okay. Obviously, I feel like a lot of people think that just because you're getting the attention you know you are okay or you're happy about it um i believe that everything happens for a reason i believe that um the platform that i was given god allowed everything to happen the way it did for a reason i kind of shut down easily after everything that i'm sure a lot of you guys saw um I went away and kind of like escaped. So, but I'm okay. How do you manage to stay consistent with God and keeping your relationship strong with Him? It is not perfect, but it's always progressing. Um, how do I manage to keep it strong? I wouldn't say right now it's strong just because. Whew, out of full honesty and transparency and being as unfiltered as I possibly can, I have not really been talking to him much. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in his word, is, it says that, come to me and I'll give you rest. All you who are weary and heavy burden and I'll give you rest. And um, I'm the type of person that's always been like, I've always done things by myself and asking for help is probably something that I still struggle with even when it comes to God. Someone said that they caught a crush on you, a girl in the black dress. <laughs> well, that's sweet. <laughs> um, now, these are really two. Looking for a partner, do you have a boyfriend? Do I have a boyfriend? No, I do not have a boyfriend. Am I looking for a partner? partner? <laughs> Am I looking for a partner? I'm open to it. I'm open to love. What do you, you know? look for in a man? Um, I've been asked this question a lot. The main thing is somebody that does live a righteous, Christ-like lifestyle. It's so easy to say that, you know, I'm a child of God. It's so easy, especially in this word, in this world, when, um... You, a lot of people unfortunately use Christ as like uh, a weapon really it's like I know this girl likes God so I'm gonna say I'm you know a man of God to get her or get in her pants when they really aren't um so somebody that not only says that they're a man of God but also lives the lifestyle genuinely a man that is um just that honors his mom and dad you know, a man that respects people around him. And, you know, 
all of the above. <laughs> Troy.1003 said, I love your feminine energy. Thank you. I appreciate that, Troy. Thank you. Um, underscore, underscore, punch zero said, can I get you to Houston? I just want to pick your brain and go on a date. You know, um, you can pick my brain over the phone. I don't have the time right now to travel to Houston. So, yeah. Are you open to studying the Bible? Yes. Yes. The great thing about the Bible is it is that one book that when you read it, it reads you back. So, I'm always open to learning more about myself through the lens of Christ. You're gorgeous seeing you on that balloon prop YouTube. Had to check your page. Thank you. I appreciate you guys. I appreciate all the comments. I appreciate the love that um, I got. I appreciate the follows. I really do. Thank you guys. And I promise y'all that I will use this platform, you know, to spread the gospel and really because it's not about me it's not about how i look it's not about how i sound even it's ultimately to bring god closer yeah what is your friend in pink's ig handle jacqueline a beautiful girl she does not have an instagram so unfortunately there's no handle there but if she did i would absolutely tag her you know because we did get a lot of questions are we sisters? No, we're not sisters. I met her that same day and we just bonded. I mean, she's gorgeous. And I liked that she also wore like a leather. Hers were lace, was latex, but like I like that we kind of um, matched in that aspect. People are wondering if you're still in Arizona. I'm not in Arizona. I actually flew in for that video that same day and then left the next day, so. I was not there for too long. What is your age limit on dating if there is one? Younger and older. <laughs> younger, I would not date somebody my age or younger. I'm 23, so there's that. Older, um, <laughs> I feel like obviously there's a limit there, but it depends on the person because I have met some very, very, very immature older men and I've also met some very 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 mature younger men so it just depends on the person and I don't want to limit myself obviously there's the extremes you know that I won't cross but yeah the way you presented yourself was flawless are you ready for something committed I am always trying to you know present myself in the best life possible a lot of people ca call it pick me a lot of people look at that and they're like, oh, I like the way she presents herself, etc. Um, as far as I'm concerned, um, I was myself on that show. I can only be myself. And I'm not everyone's cup of tea, and that's okay. Am I open to something serious? Yes, absolutely. Have you ever been to Los Angeles? I have. What do you think about it? It's gorgeous. Uh, would I live there? No. <laughs> just because I feel like when I went there, my spirit just was not at ease the whole time I was there. But yeah. I would not mind going to LA. You seem so respectful and pure, and you seemed like you knew what you wanted on that show. I knew what I wanted. I always know what I want. You know, I'm the type of person that lives a life... Um, a very structured life per se I go for what I want and I'm far from pure I have a past you know I am constantly trying to live a righteous life I fall short on a daily basis you know but that's where God's grace comes in are you a girl's girl <laughs> depends on the situation I do not condone violence. I do not condone um, putting another person down regardless of how they treat you because ultimately we're all going through our own battles in life and in our situation with the video, 
I completely understand that nerves played a huge role. Nerves, alcohol, you know, other influences as, as well. Some people went there with, um, I guess, a, what's the word, a scripted narrative, while others just showed up and, you know, may not have answered the way they wanted to answer it, but that just makes it more genuine, I think. You know, if I had written down, because I, I thought about it, like I've watched the videos before. Shout out to Arlette and what her and BM are doing is amazing and it's very respectable. I really did think about writing a script, you know, and like, okay, this is what she asks and this is what, and this is how I'm gonna answer it. But then I wanted it to be as genuine. So, yeah. If you had to go back and pick one of them again, after all of the options in your video, in the video, who are you picking? If I were to go back and pick, who am I picking? Uh, we all saw the video and we all saw who I ended up picking. Um, if I could go back, I would pick what I typically go for. Uh, I misinterpreted his question. And mind you, he was down the line. There were, I wanna say maybe four different women between me and him and they were talking and for the most part we could not hear what they were saying and all I heard was it's giving mother you know and to me that comment came off the same way as somebody calling someone else an auntie to me it was kind of the same thing I looked at it as an insult but after speaking with him again and comprehending what he meant by that I was like okay you know I if I could go back, would I get my balloon back and probably ask more questions? Absolutely. But it's okay. If you live, you learn. What do you like to do for fun in your free time? In my free time, I like to sleep. Sleep is fun. <laughs> or um, I like to just spend time with family. I like the outdoors. So hiking, being in nature. I enjoy sushi, so probably eating some sushi. I like cuddles, you know, all the above. I like things that um, add to my happiness and joy. Uh, what made you go on the show? Good question, what made me go on the show? Um, it's 2024. I'm typically a homebody. I live in a pretty small city. And um, I went on the show knowing that, hey, there's a high percentage and a high possibility of me leaving there single still, like by myself. I knew that, but I also knew that, um, who knows, maybe, just maybe, this is where I would meet my person and five years from now, we can tell our children how mom and dad met and just, you know, joke about it eventually. So yeah, and not only that, but also one of my really, really good friends from middle school lives in Arizona and it was another way of seeing her after not seeing her for so long. So I was initially supposed to be on that show in April, but that fell through because of just my own work obligations. But then BM was, you know, um, messaged me, letting me know the dates that would work again. So we worked together to make that happen. What attracts you to a man physically? Um, muscles. <laughs> I don't want to just keep it shallow because I know y'all will eat me alive if I just said muscles and didn't say anything else. I enjoy a beautiful smile. I enjoy a beautiful smile. I like someone that whose smile just lights, lights up the room. You know, I like a man that is well kept physically, someone that can dress. You know, shoes. Shoes are very important. You know, and how you put things together, very important as well. So physically, I would say, you know, how you take care of yourself, because health is wealth. So that, beautiful smile. I like kind eyes. So yeah, I can go on and on. And what kind of traits are you looking for in a spouse? In a spouse, I'm looking for a righteous man a man that lives, you know, a righteous life, an honest man, 
a supporting, you know, partner, someone that knows my goals and is willing to, you know, support them. You know, someone that is ready to be a father, someone that I can trust with my heart, <laughs> my mind, my soul, and eventually the kids that we create. And just a lifelong partner. You know, life is short. I want to be happy. But yeah. Mm. Is the game real? Yes. I'm glad that people ask that question because, God, okay, where do I start? There would not be an Esther. There would not be and you know the individual there would not be any of those people without that shell i wouldn't have the exposure that i have without that shell so it's important that we give them the credit that they deserve you know and it's also important for people to realize that hey this is a black owned company this is a black owned page and them being willing to like share their platform with us and then people making a mockery out of it is actually very despicable considering the fact that hey <laughs> this is a mom and a dad and they have a kid and this is how they you know provide for their family it is 2024 this is a valid way of making money so i just hope that our episode is used as like a learning lesson for a lot of people that god does not like ugly you know, go on someone's show and be genuine and don't waste people's time. You know, clout, <laughs> clout is not really all that because there is life outside of social media. There's life beyond the likes and the comments and the follows. And when you look yourself in the mirror, ask yourself, did I go there for the right reasons? And did I you know, portray myself in the best light possible. It's a very real show. And for, I also want to add to this. Uh, when you poach off of someone else's work for your own benefit, that speaks more of your character. Because honestly, kudos to them. Because um, besides the show, I know that I can reach out to our lead or BM and ask for like genuine life advice. And it's amazing that him and I are actually from the same country. He's Congolese as well. So that's one thing that even made me, you know, respect them even more. So for those that are poaching off of their work and kind of having this, putting out this narrative that this is a joke, God forgive y'all, really. But it's not right this is a genuine show for genuine people that genuinely want to find love this is what you were all waiting for as y'all know i went on the show i matched with an individual and a lot happened from the second he walked in until today it's been over literally it's been over 10 days um i want to start off by saying this is no hate towards anyone including the individual because at the end of the day we are all human and adding fuel to the fire scooping low is really not what i stand for you know i had just met the person that same day a lot of the answers that I gave, a lot of my actions that day were because I was flipping tired. I had woken up at 4 a.m. I live about three and a half, four hours away from the airport. My flight was at 10. So 4 a.m., four hours, that's eight, you know, without traffic, none of that, giving me about two hours or less to get to a pretty busy airport and make it there on time. I got there, my flight got delayed. I got to AZ very, very late, you know? I was, we were supposed to be there at three. 
I didn't get there until like four something. And honestly, thank you, Arlette. Thank you, BM, for being very understanding. Um, with not just me, but like a lot of other people as well. And accommodating that. <laughs> I need to rewatch this portion because Lord knows I watched this one time and then I rewatched it in different clips. So this is where he walks in. Of course, the second I start watching it, it starts to load. Okay, let's go ahead and bring out our next single guy. Hello, welcome. <laughs> I'll have you hold this. All right, if we can have your name. Uh, my name is Aaron. Aaron, how old are you? The second he came, what were my thoughts? Um... I like this outfit. I really, really like this outfit. Put very put together. Put together very well. I was like, okay, I like the outfit because one of the reasons why I popped on the other individuals were because of their outfit, you know, which is a valid, right valid reason. Um, so I saw him and I was like, okay, nice outfit. I like the shoes, and mind you. When he walked in, he had like the biggest smile. So in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, this guy's gonna be a nice guy. So there's that. 29. 29, okay, yeah. what do you do? Uh, I'm a licensed plumber. 29, good age, licensed plumber, pretty, you know, good career. Okay, very cool. Yeah. And now, what do you look for in a woman? Um, I look like, I look for a woman that's not promiscuous and um, has a career going for herself okay yes ma'am and I okay i'm like looking at him this whole time I'm like okay not promiscuous has a good career you know and yes calling a woman ma'am to me is a really it's a good sign for me it's like okay we're getting that what are some of your deal breakers uh deal breaker being promiscuous not cleanly um don't have a career and then if you guys watch the clip, he's not just, him and I kept making eye contact. And then he was also trying to like address the different women as well, you know? So that to me shows good communication skills. Eye contact is important. And if you're in a room, you don't just focus in on one spot, you kind of roam around. And obviously he walked in on one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different women. He does, like he needs to look around and see Okay, what am I interested in? Who am I interested in? You know? But he was kind of browsing too. Not, nothing wrong really with that. Really for yourself. Okay. All right. So we did get a pop balloon. Okay. Let's go ahead and go on over there and see what's going on. Yeah. All right. If we can have your name and age why you popped your balloon. Hi, my name is Karma. I'm 24. Okay. Oh, sorry. I'm supposed to say the pop in the balloon part. <laughs> um, for me, it just did not work. I didn't feel like I had chemistry. I wasn't fully attracted to you. And I feel like that counts if we were going to be going through a dating show. You know? Yes, the feeling is definitely mutual. Okay. Could he have worded that differently? Yes. Could he have been nicer about it? Yes. So, uh, that's okay. Yeah. Thank you. You did me a favor. You know, absolutely. Yeah. I'm glad you have a great Thank day. Thank you, Queen. You too. Okay. Well, let's go ahead. And... All right. We got to pop over here. If we can have your name and age and why you ended up popping your balloon. Hi, my name is Jara. I'm 22. Okay. And why did we end up popping our balloon? Um, the comment you made. Um, did I like a more humble person. That's someone that responds to a defensive -ish. Yeah, that's really it. Yeah. I, I didn't really necessarily like yeah, how you That's fine. Hey, I could just, yeah. all I can do is be honest. I you mean, know? yeah, be honest. I be authentic to, self. To, That's okay. To, to, to find a match sure. that wouldn't match it. That's sure. all queen. I mean, 100% understand. Yes. Okay, so he ended up defending himself. You know, she said what everyone thought, including myself, that that comment was a bit rude. But he said, yeah, you know, I came here to, my, to find a match. You know, and he wasn't being disrespectful. And he understood where she was coming from. 
the whole time I'm thinking, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm like, okay, I, I could kind of hear what they're saying, you know, now I'm fully listening to it, I'm like, okay. Yeah. Sure. Okay. And I was, um, she's someone that's your type? Um, she all right, you know, okay. you're not really my type. I don't mean to be disrespectful, no, disrespectful, you know, but if I see you in public, I wouldn't reach out totally to Totally fine. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Exactly right. what the other guys said. And we did get a pop balloon over here. Your name and age and why you ended up popping your balloon. I'm Lex and I'm 23 and I pop my balloon because I feel like you could be a tad bit dishes. This in my opinion is not arrogant, you know. She, I'm just skipping know. now because this is about me is I'm not going to own. Okay. No you know, for sure, yes. Respectful. I liked what Lex said where she was like, it's not necessarily what you say sometimes, it's how you say it, which I live by that because I learned that tone is very important. You know, you can you can calm a bear, not literally, but like, you know, figuratively, you can calm a bear by the tone of your voice. I don't like that. That's okay. all I was looking okay, at the so hair on your arms. This is you where, know, the you know, the disrespect, in my opinion, started. Why you ended up popping your balloon? Brianna, 26. My eyes are... Up here, baby. Are you looking at this? Right no, I, I'm, I'm looking at the hair on your arms. You know, women I deal with, they don't have hair on their arms. Don't do too much. Hey, I'm just being honest. Don't do too at much. that point, yeah. I swear to God, if you guys see, Jacqueline looks at her arm and then she looks at me and then we, I, I forgot what we said. And I was like, is he just joking now? You know, because it's something so like small. And I was like, okay, maybe he's like joking now, you know, because. Initially, I thought that he was gonna say something about like a body part or you know insult the way she smiled or her hair or, I mean like you know the head, hair on her head or something But hair on your arm to me didn't seem like something you know that big of a deal Oh, I, I don't like that. That's okay. all I was looking at you trying to say if I'm looking at particular body parts You just parts, wasn't looking at my eyes. That's no, I was looking was at the hair now. on your arm. Anyways, arms, she asked me the question. Yes. Um, can y'all say I'm like yeah, pacing I'm back and forth at that moment? Y'all, I'm tired. <laughs> I'm ready to sit down. So you ain't tall enough. Okay. Don't do too much. Well, though. you're not qualified, baby. I, that's so that's all good. good. Let's move on. Let's move on. Okay. So <laughs> we do still have. Y'all see my pop, face? But she looking like you no, literally, because you guys want to clip faces. Qualified, I, so that's all good. Like, look, let's move on. Let's move on. Okay, so <laughs> we do still have three unpop. But she, y'all see my face? You go, oh, okay. Like, okay. In this clip, look at my face. Tired. I'm tired. I'm like, bro. At this point, you and I can go back and forth once I sit down. Because regardless. You are going to hear from me regardless, but I got to sit down first, you know? Why did you match with Ninja Turtle? We'll get to the questions. Let's finish this. Respectfully, though. We do still have three and pop, but she looking like you go, ah, okay. <laughs> okay. Hey, just because you got hair on your arms, that's okay, though, Queen. You look phenomenal, though. <laughs> I could look anyway. I could look in. This is okay. where it's so craziness happened. So he's saying, get your balloon happened. back, but how do you feel about him? Um, I'm not going to get my balloon back. Oh. She was so respectful about it. <laughs> and then Kayla. I thought you had to say That's why I had to ask. So can you have your name and name? Kayla, my girl. Kayla, my girl. <sighs> hey. Don't be in the kitchen if you can't take the heat. That's all I'll say. Don't be in the kitchen unless you can take the heat. And if you're gonna come with heat, be ready to get it back. And that's kind of what she did. Do I condone it? No. I feel like, you know, her personality is very like vibrant and you know, out loud. And there's nothing wrong with that. I wouldn't personally go back and forth with a man personally she's a beautiful she has a, a lot going on for herself she's a gorgeous woman her personality is you know very you know flamboyant there's nothing wrong with that i personally would never you you ain't gonna catch me going back and forth with the man just that
especially not on camera. Like, no. Age and why you ended up popping? My name is Kayla. I'm 23. Um, originally, I was not gonna pop my book. I really like her voice. I am gonna mention that again. I like her voice a lot. Because I know a lot of them popped it because he was being, I guess, arrogant. But to me, I like my man that's not gonna sit in every girl's face and, you know. And the fact that she mentioned it, I'm glad that she did because I also, that's one of the reasons why I popped Mr. Chandler's balloon. Um, I like a selective man. I need you to know exactly what you want and go for it. You know? So, yes, and he was pretty selective. Obviously, with the way the videos go, you have to kind of, you know, pop the balloons and kind of, um, what's the word? Rank. Not rank, really. Y'all. I can't think of the word. But, um, work your way down, I guess, one down the line until you get to your very top option. Um, and he was doing that. Did he do it the best way? The most respectful way? No, 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 no. But we gonna get to that. No complimenting them, you know? So I tend to argue back with me because, Cat, you and me, you a little sassy just a little bit. Get to relax. Uh, you stocky. Okay, I don't, okay, this is where... Y'all like clipping faces. You guys love clipping faces. You love that. But you always forget to clip the faces that are important. Can you and me? The you look sassy just a little, sassy, a little bit. And since you want to come at everybody over here, I'm going to get at you too. You kind of look like a ninja to I like how my phone just died. Anyway, I was annoyed. Okay? Not at Kayla, not at him necessarily. At the situation because we as black people constantly do this to each other you know we we go to the insults we go to the physical you know we call each other names and then the second other races call us those names it's a big issue we scream racism do i think kayla was right no she knows she wasn't right in that situation you know and she's taken you know accountability for that she felt attacked so she attacked back and that was her way of coping with that situation i don't personally condone that you know do i condone what he did absolutely not i already showed you guys if y'all watch the clip watch my face the whole time i'm not condoning this i'm not and i was like you're gonna hear from me just not right now because i gotta sit down but yeah, so that happened. And then in the next clip, he comes, you know, and they ask, oh, that's like, oh, okay, we see what you still have your balloon. You know, you ask questions. And that's when I was like, the infamous, are you done? Because in my mind, I'm like, you're up here. Let's bring it down, okay? Match my flow, match my energy, match the vibe, bro. Like, you don't, you don't need to be doing all that okay the world is crazy enough in his situation he's been attacked enough now you're here in my aura let me try to control the situation here a little bit so that's what that question was are you done now we can talk because if i had matched it we would have just went back and forth he would have insulted me whatever and i didn't I, was i scared absolutely not i can hold my own i can you know but i am a strong believer strong believer in praising in public but correcting in private like i keep saying regardless he was gonna get it just not in front of y'all because that's another black man that i was not willing to put down in front of the whole world but yeah, so we ended up matching, held hands, and walked off. And thank God that he held my hand because my legs were dead. I've had to cut this video a few times because my legs are done. I have a really bad knee, like all the above. And not knee, but bad hip. So yeah. Now into the questions. Let's get into it. I'm just gonna read through because I like a lot of them 
are wondering about if you guys worked out, why did you pick him, why did you choose him, and all that stuff, and like what's happening now, do you, like all that stuff. Just all right, ready. I'm ready to answer them all, honestly. Okay. You know, because a lot happened in between, and um, a lot of false stories were being portrayed out there. That's why if you guys see any of my comments, I kept saying, I'm gonna let it slide for now. I'm gonna let it slide for now. I'm gonna let it slide for now. And I've let it slide enough. Y'all saw my long ass message to the individual apologizing. You know? But let's go ahead. Let's hear y'all out. Um, did you and him work out? No. What what did you guys talk about when he went off? Oh, you're a little nosy, huh? No kidding. <laughs> Um, so you guys see us walk off. The second we walked off, the shoes were off. The shoes are off. I pulled them to the side away from everyone because the way it's set up, they have a seating area for us, you know, and they have a seating area for like the audience. Um, like a food, like they fed us. Shout out to y'all. Thank you guys. Cause I was hungry and they had drinks and everything too. So thank you guys for, you know, allowing us a very comfortable space while we were there. So I pulled him to the side where no one can hear. Because like I said, praise in public, correct. Because I am African after all. I am Congolese at that. So you was going to hear it. So we pulled to the side. And I'm like, did you have to do all that? Seriously. I literally asked him word for word. Is that the real you or is that for show? Because in my mind, I was like, y'all hired this guy to just troll or is this like for real for real you know and he was you know he respectful guy so that's why i'm like i don't know where all of this is coming from you know um uh, because the conversation that we had where it's like no you know he felt like everyone was coming on him which i completely understood because it is seven versus one at that time you know, and he had to defend himself. However, you did not, and this is to you, you did not have to say the things that you said the way you said them. I would have left with you regardless, you know, if you had came and really showcased, showcased the true you, I would have left with you. And you also know, my love, you know why you went on that show. You and your brother know why you went on that show. And I'm wondering who was that person that you guys knew that was on the lineup because I can put two and two together because um, you, now that I know everything that I know, were not there for the right reasons. I left with him because I was tired and I needed to sit down. I had a lot more to say, but I didn't want to say it on camera and disrespect him. I was honestly spaced out because for the people saying that, oh, she knew he was the last person she didn't want to leave alone. No, <laughs> I was spaced out. I didn't know how many guys were, you know, coming. I did not. So there was no way in hell I would have known that he's the last person. Let me leave with him. And yes, I was interested genuinely next question um we just answered quite a bit of the questions good i'm glad <laughs> this video is a little long why are you a gold digger posing as an innocent child of god why am i a gold digger posing as an innocent child of god huh <sighs> I, a little bit about myself, for those of you guys that clearly know me so well, I started working at the age of 11. And I've held a job since then, I'm 23, do the math. I've never not had a job. At one point, two years ago, I had four jobs. I was engaged to an amazing man, shout out to him. It didn't work out because I wasn't ready for marriage. You know, I was still pretty young. And after the relationship you know ended I'm a workaholic I find solace in working so I worked a lot and that's in that 
time frame, I probably made too much money, way more than I needed because I'm content with a pretty simple, you know, comfortable life. And I'm in nursing school currently, still working because bills still need to get paid. I've never relied on a man for anything. So uh, when he mentioned I can pull out $100,000 off the bank, it's 2024, $100,000 does not get you far. You know, can only get you so far and it's not that far. And for a gold digger, you know, I would not be on a show to find love. There are shows for gold diggers out there. I would probably get on one of those shows. And yes, it might be defensive. Yes, because I have, you know, my parents have instilled in me the concept of hard work. So when people dismiss that by calling me a gold digger, that's very offensive. I'm not a gold digger. Do I enjoy being in a company of someone who is financially stable absolutely who doesn't as a woman our biggest thing is security very important a woman that can sit there and lie to you and be like oh i don't care is lying you know because ultimately security is important so i ain't saying i'm a gold digger but i am not messing with a broke person respectfully um, this guy, David Josh, I'm going to read his entire message that he sent to you. I will uh, scan through it quick. Okay. Because, um, <laughs> okay, David Josh is, has commented, well, they commented under, you know, the individual's um, post basically saying that I support you. However, there's nothing wrong with her giving her number to another contestant on the show. But he says, if she gives her number to other contestants on the show, let's stop there because there's a false rumor that's going on, including other people saying that I gave my number to five different guys on that show. Damn. I must really be for the streets if I'm giving out my number to five different guys in one day. I gave my number to one person on that show. One person. Okay. Let me give you all a rundown of everything. Me and the individual walk off. I call him out on his BS because that was BS. You know, we talk about it. We low-key start planning like, okay, after this, where are we going? As we're talking another individual shows up chad glasses comes after the show we're done filming so now we are networking yes sir we're networking at that time he comes to the both of us because him and i are talking still and when i was on the phone with this individual i apologize it's really loud up there when i was on the phone with this individual he mentioned that he, he mentioned his brother had videos you know he basically said that my brother has videos um of the behind the scene you know and i'm like please post them because it will vouch for what i'm saying i have no reason to lie we're talking me and him are talking chad comes and then he's like hey you guys were really cool like i want to get you know let's talk let's work um he asked for both of our um social media you know i give it to him in front of the individual because i'm like he's asking for both of us we can network after this we can work this show we can really use this to our advantage you know he he's in music maybe if he wants you know if um the individual wants to work with him they can work he's also into modeling i would love to get back into modeling so that could be something in my mind i'm thinking yes now it's okay to network with different people as i'm giving this person my phone the individual is right there storms off right there and then i was like oh okay he took it that way so instead of being like you know screw him I take my phone, 
I rush to follow him because I'm like, hey, what's going on? Outside, you know, the producer tried to also talk to him, but he stormed off hella fast. I'm like, wow, them feet, <laughs> them no feet move fast. I get there. He's already in his car, right? He's gone. I didn't see him. And then BM's like, hey, what happened? What's going on? I'm like, I was talking to him one second. Chad comes, asks for our social media. He storms off. I'm following him, trying to figure out what's going on. I, I understood why he stormed off. I went to approach him so we can have a conversation, but he was already gone. I asked the producer to call him right there because I'm not the type of person that's like, screw him. I like to take care of things right, right there. And then the producer calls him. BM calls him. BM called you. You're basically cussing, not cussing. You're yelling on the phone. So I grabbed the phone from BM because I'm like, that anger is misplaced. Put it on me because I'm the one that hurt you. So I took the phone from BM. You know, I asked for it. He gave it to me. No, no, let me talk to him. <laughs> and when I tell you, this man went off. Off. He's going off on the phone. And I'm like, I apologize. I get where you're coming from, but you were there. It's not like I was doing it behind your back. You know, I thought that we were all going to network and really make, you know. <sighs> in my mind, I'm like, these are really cool people. If I'm ever in AZ. And it wasn't just Chad who's Instagram. I got I got Kayla's, I got Bria, I got Lex, I got Jacqueline's information as well. You know, all of those women on there, you know. <laughs> anyway, so I'm talk I'm trying to calm him down. He calls me all the names in the book, but the child of God. I'm like, okay, you know, at this point I'm not gonna do this. Okay, I'm not gonna do this. BM asked him, he's like, okay, so are you taking her on a date? Like, I'm not taking that beat on the date. And I'm like, okay. Now you're disrespecting me, okay? Now I'm not, I'm not gonna stand for that. So I was like, you know, it's whatever, it's okay. Me and BM have a conversation after that, explaining what happened, you know? He hears my side of the story, he clearly heard his side of the story over the phone. And then I'm walking, mind you, my friend drove me there. You know, thank you, you know, you're an amazing friend and I appreciate everything that you did for me that day. Um, they were hungry. So they were like, hey, we gotta go, we gotta go eat. So I'm like, yeah, yeah, So I'm grabbing my stuff. I'm walking. <laughs> okay. Studio right here where the situation happened. He storms off right there. So after he storms off, I speak with BM. I go back inside, right? I go back inside to grab my stuff because my stuff is still there. That's when the second individual comes in. Yes, I spoke with that individual. You know, he was very respectful. At that point, it's like, hey, that's already done. He disrespected me. He has he wants nothing to do with me, rightfully so at that moment, but it did not excuse the way that he retaliated. So in my mind, I'm like, yeah, we're, we're done. We're really done, and I'm not going to deal with that because I really thought that after a conversation and he explained how we felt, I tried to excuse it at the time, but when somebody shows you their true colors, believe them. I go back, I speak with another individual in there and I was like, hey, are you okay? They were checking on me when I got back. It was all nice and cool. I grab my stuff, I walk out. As I walk out, y'all's favorite flannel king <laughs> approaches me, okay? This guy is like, hey, you know, why, you know, why, why did you pop on me? And he was very respectful, you know, great guy. Um, why'd you pop on me? And I'm like, I really did mean that, like, you were an attractive person. However, I just wasn't attracted to, in all honesty, though, in all honesty, I wanted to really say this. You are an attractive person, but I really would, I, I like a more built man. And maybe it's the clothes that he wore. Maybe it is, you know, it kind of hit that he's tall, he's handsome, you know, whatever, but he just was not built, okay? And he is someone that I saw as like a friend. I'm like, we could possibly be friends. 
you know, or we can work. You know, he looks like a freaking model to me. He's tall, he has the facial features. So I'm like, he looks like a model. So I'm, in my mind, I'm thinking he's a model. Um, so, yes, I gave Chandler my number. Am I attracted to Chandler? No, not necessarily. If you put Ryan and Chandler side by side, they look nothing alike. Just because they're both light skinned does not mean they have they look alike. Okay. So I was like, yeah, we could we could still be friends. I have a message, you know, from Chandler that kind of threw me off, you know. To me, it came off as like fetishizing. Am I gonna share our mess our text messages? No, that's privacy, you know. He long story short i texted him saying you should probably give because when we spoke i had i thought that he was approaching me as hey it didn't work out as you know p potential romantic partners but it can work out as friends but the message is kind of relayed otherwise and i remember texting i was like hey you should probably give you know what i'm gonna show that part because it's me saying it and people like to see stuff to believe it well this is something that i personally like don't want to do but unfortunately because my name is being tainted you know and the full truth is not being told this individual has gone and um basically portrayed themselves to be prince charming this enlightened being when and I'm not going to pass judgment. I don't really know them like that. But there's always two sides to every story. And then there's the truth, you know. And so when, the, when Chandler asked for my number, like I said, I'm thinking, okay, cool. We could be friends. Okay. If anything... Um, he seemed like a genuine guy. He likes anime. I watch Naruto religiously. So it's like, okay, we could maybe talk about that. However, I also understood that he has a match. So when um, the first text message that I got was the first text message that I got, I replied with, oh goodness. Okay. Oh goodness because it's like okay uh, and then they um, he texted basically saying that I wish that you could have given me a chance which understandably so I'm not here to bash him I'm really not it's like okay I get that I had my reasons and it's okay to have my reasons you know so and then I mentioned I was like you're not serious Cause it's like you're not serious right because we had a whole conversation as to why this wasn't going to be um then i he said some things in between that and then i basically said give the girl that you match with a chance okay maybe you two could be something because everyone saw that Chandler left with someone amazing amazing woman you know her personality she just radiates you know um and they had a connection there the same thing with Antoine too I remember me and Jacqueline were like talking when Antoine started talking with the last girl I completely forgot her name I'm sorry but the girl at the end and they were talking they were like them too they go so well together okay and I don't like wasting people's time if I'm not interested in you, I don't need to be rude about it. I'm just going to say I'm not interested in you. So, yeah. Just uh, letting y'all know that there's always two sides to every story. This person who, like I said, not bashing him, okay? The number that was given with the intentions of, I have a lot of guy friends. I do. I have a lot of guy friends. 
by a lot, I mean my closest friends right now, I have two really close guy friends. Even in nursing school, I hung out with the guys. I grew up around men, you know, boys that I played with. That's just been my thing. And there's nothing wrong with that. You know, I grew up a tomboy. For the longest time there, I was a tomboy. I enjoyed the sport. Which doesn't make her a pick-me type girl. It's just the way she grew up. Thank you. It doesn't. And there's nothing wrong with sometimes wanting to be picked. But this situation was not it, love. There was not that. Because the person that you guys, you know, are praising is not as innocent as y'all think he is. Anyway. Somebody said right. um, on your live, like you talked about how you had that video. And, but you said you didn't want to put it up because you didn't want to expose anything. The video that... Of you guys on the phone talking about whatever. We had a conversation. I let too much slide. Okay. Oh, this segment, we'll call it redemption or something like that <sighs> everything was going well until the video came out the video comes out my DMs are being blown up tagged I'm being tagged and things and I'm like whoa okay everything's okay it's okay it's okay until he posts he basically he was saying that it's not what y'all think um esther did something and blah 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 the second he posts that i reach out to him right away and let me see if i can find that here for y'all the second the video comes out I reach out to him right away saying we need to talk because he posted a one-sided one-sided um story about how after I left you know I left because Esther gave my number out to five different guys I'm like whoa, whoa, whoa where is this coming from the individual tells me I think you're a very beautiful woman and we would have been great fit for one another but your actions turned me off you thought that was acceptable and it wasn't that was an indication to me that you still have some t some more maturing to do but i hope you get the exposure you need to find a better candidate than myself queen <laughs> this is a part where you know i read that i was like okay it's not acceptable okay i wanted to reach this is my reply to him saying i wanted to reach out to you and apologize for giving another guy my instagram it wasn't my intention this is i'm saying instagram because when i'm talking to you still with the potential of us being something that was when chad came and asked for both of our contacts because i looked you actually followed Chad. So I was like, what the heck was the problem if you ended up following him anyway? Whether you followed him there or followed him afterwards, he asked for both of our information, right? So at that time, yes, I was wrong for giving the Instagram. But after you storm off, after calling me all names in the book, you're not my problem anymore. And I'm not your problem anymore. We're not together. Leaving out... I think people forget that in your single season, it's okay to date. And that's kind of what that ex you know, experience was. You're dating different people to see which one is the best fit. So call it whatever you guys want. But just because now 2 million people, 2 plus million, because it's all over TikTok, Twitter, whatever, saw that does not negate from the fact that y'all do it on a regular daily basis. You talk to multiple different people 
And then once you click with one person, I personally believe in being loyal in the talking season. We hadn't even talked. So come on, grow up. I was like, it wasn't my intentions to disrespect you in any way. He asked for my number because he did previously ask for my number. And I said, um, and I thought it might be more appropriate to connect on Instagram since he mentioned having a podcast. I meant model modeling. He models and he's a musician and potentially having me on there. That's what I said. I genuinely wanted to know you and I would love to see where things could go between us. I hope you understand and I'm sorry if I caused any confusions or hurt feelings. Let me know if you're open to talking about it. If not, I understand. <laughs> okay, how do I say this in the nicest way possible? Love, I owed you no explanation. I owed you no apology either. But I respect you enough. I respected, keyword, you enough. And I was genuine, you know, when I came on that show. And I realized that, hey, I'm not always going to get it right. And in this instance, I got it wrong. And instead of being big headed about it, I apologized. Okay, so the fact that you are still going around doing all these interviews with different people, you know, painting me out to be the bad guy, the bad guy wouldn't give a flying F. The bad guy would not apologize when they know they don't need to. So I did that. I even showed him, you know, the messages between me and Chad, basically letting him know that, hey, just to ease your mind is more reassurance that I promise you the DMs he reached out. We talked about like he basically said it was nice meeting you. And then he mentioned the food place that I had tagged when I was there. And he said how amazing it was. Chad is an amazing person, a good father, you know. It didn't work out between us and that's okay. And I left it at that, he left it at that. It does not mean that we can't be cordial. And the men that I will be with will respect that, understand that, and be confident enough in himself, in me and what we have to understand that, hey, she knows where home is. Okay. I brought up that I'm a woman, okay? When you stand very firm on having a selective man, and this man is basically, when, she, he, when he asked in the clip, he asks that pink dress, Jacqueline gets her balloon back, that, that, you know, got me a little bit. So I was like, okay, that's when I was going to pop. Because I'm a woman. It's like, okay, I'm not going to be your second option. I'm not. At all. And then I remember that, hey, give it a chance. You may be, you know, reading too deep into this. Because at that point, I had already processed why I popped on the person that I really did want to leave with. And looking back at that time, I was like, okay, I'm not gonna make that mistake twice again. Okay, so let's see where this goes. This mention, this guy, um, basically brings up that the reason why he asked for her balloon back where he's like, yeah, I was going to get her balloon back, then pop it. So, um, you want her to get her balloon back just for you to pop it? Maybe he meant that in a certain way that I'm not completely understanding, but to me it's like, okay, so this is a game to you. I get that, okay. Jacqueline's an amazing person. She was genuine. So, 
um, and respectful and she didn't pop her balloon for just odd reasons. She popped her balloon for a valid reason. She has hair on her arms. I personally thought you was just goofing around. So I was like, okay. And certain things are, I know how men function. Certain things are acceptable for certain women and they're not acceptable for certain women. And that's okay. Cause we women do the same thing. If we're attracted to someone, we let certain things slide. And unfortunately, my judgment at the time was not right because I let too much slide. But I, I already explained to y'all why I did. So, uh, I basically brought up how I'm open to still going on a date. You know, we can make something work. And then we talked about it and then he's like basically saying, if we want to do a follow-up and say what we didn't go on a date you give your number out to different guys and i'm like that's not even the case but okay i just at that time i just let it slide really okay this is where hypocrisy for me begins what is a red flag in a woman or let asks you say promiscuous Okay, let's break it down real quick. I'm going on Google, define promiscuous. Promiscuous, okay. Uh, one of the definitions of promiscuity is having or characterized by many sexual relationships aka somebody who sleeps around um sir you knew me for how long for you to call me a promiscuous woman you don't even know when i was born you don't know my birthday my favorite color heck you don't even know where i'm from you don't know my background. You don't know what I believe in when it comes to sex, but you felt so comfortable to call me promiscuous over and over and over again. I let that slide. Um, all because I gave a number out to another human being because you were already out the picture. When you talk about promiscuity, I'm thinking overly sexual person. It's okay for you to post this. Online. But preach God. And this is not me judging you. Now I'm just not letting things slide anymore. Because in, in my opinion, I'm like, whoa, if you're going to talk that talk, walk the walk respectfully my love respectfully i'm thinking that okay you know you work out you can you you can post your muscles but there is such thing as how you carry yourself because if you portray that instantly people are thinking but people i'll speak for myself are thinking i'm thinking f boy i'm thinking you're not serious you do want your goods out there I mean, it's whatever I started watching, um, that's when everything just started going off as far as like the rumors going around. Um, I gave Ryan my number, which is false. I wish that he uh, spoke a bit more about that and cleared my name because Ryan and I never exchanged numbers. So that's false. Uh, I gave five different guys my number. That's false. Two. And my match wasn't even one of them. So. Was there an individual on the show that I was more attracted to than my match? Yes. And I mentioned it on the video. He is typically what I go for. 
after everything goes and I feel like my match realized that I'm not gonna scoop down to his level, I get a message. I wanted to reach out and apologize. Out of nowhere, you know, he basically lets me know that, hey, um, my mom, his mother, by the way, basically said that he was overreacting and that he should take me on a date. I get a phone call from my friend here. This is, mind you, after the different interviews, the comments, the stories, the posts, because he went crazy on the one woman that is defending him. Because I have clips of people making fun of you. And instead of, you know, participating, I'm defending you. That's when this interview comes on. And... He... <sighs> okay, I have some words for kite ZZ. I know the Arlette and BM are very, very genuine people. Genuine. Okay? And you guys know that their show is very serious and you guys see the how they're they're approaching this situation with so much class on the other hand you guys see this man who is portraying not only himself but the show in a bad light and rather than making sure you get all your facts straight rather than hey asking you know bm or let the show the production is it okay if we interview this person i'm not saying that they own us i'm not saying that and they're not saying that but what i'm saying is it's a respect thing without their show you guys wouldn't have this content because if you guys look on their page that interview is their highest viewed um video Please correct me if I'm wrong. I didn't really scroll like that. I just looked at the most recent ones and then I looked at the interview. And you wouldn't have that interview without the show. The least y'all could have done is at least make sure that, hey, maybe, you know, be more alive. Like maybe they want to do a follow up with these people. Let's just wait. Because you guys clearly see that they do follow ups with people. You guys clearly see that. Because they genuinely want us to win. They genuinely want us to find our matches. But for you guys to take that, you know, that responsibility upon yourselves and make this your own thing where you start to interview people, not once but twice now, yes, they reached out to me. But you guys can clearly tell who's the cloud chaser in this situation. Where I come in, I commented when y'all posted that and I was like that's those are not messages from me and instead of you guys taking down the video because once a fact is tainted it's not a fact anymore once a truth has a light to it it's not a truth anymore it's still there making money off of a lie and a half truth from a man who has disrespected women because if you guys look on my Instagram and the previous video that you guys had, which I shared. Now, darling, this is the moment. No. You're talking hey, about. It's like a nuke. We need you to use the little clippy tongs and, and move it out the room. Why are you saying? A nuke that you still have on your channel for clout, respectfully. But I'm the one that wants clout. They reached out. Anyway, I scanned through the... She did send me her number, and she was requesting me to call her. And um, I, I honestly, I was thinking about calling her because...
just for reference, you know, make sure your editing is done right prior to posting things that can be misconstrued because messages on messages on messages calling me names, bullying me, harassing me because y'all didn't do your work right. Come on. Anyway. <sighs> as far as the ex um, is concerned, when I saw the videos, because yes, they tagged me in the videos, I saw them. My first thought was, this has nothing to do with me. I don't want to get involved. I want nothing to do with this man. But the more the truth started coming out, yes, it's his past. But there's a difference between having a past and changing versus having a past and still doing the same thing and portraying the same behaviors. When I got reached out by the women, I was like, God, how can I better help? How can I better serve? You know them in this situation because imagine someone that did you so much harm get this huge platform imagine the trauma that they had to relive again because yes i am a girl's girl in this situation it's okay to be a you know it's not okay to be <laughs> Oh, I act the way that I acted until it's time to actually be a girl's girl. And when I become a girl's girl, it's a problem. I was reached out. And then out of nowhere, our friend here posts that they got fired. Not only that, but basically says that it's the women that called and literally the second because this is what you know the individual messaged me still using the word of God okay and no I'm not gonna hoard God to myself everyone deserves to have the relationship with Christ but don't be a wolf in sheep's clothing don't do that good morning thank you for reaching out it was nice getting to know you for a bit because we talked for a while there and guess what this individual did while we were talking record the conversation okay and initially i was like oh goodness um i don't know how i feel about that but then i remembered that he also is the same person that posted my message for the whole world to see. Thank you for reaching out. It was nice getting to know you a bit. How'd you sleep? I slept well, but I'm not having a good day. I got fired from work today with all this social media crap. I'm done with this. I'm going to get my money from this shirt and leave it at that. This is too much and everybody being messy. I'm just done with it all. Whoa, what was their reason? I'm like, you can't just get fired, you know, without probable cause. Like, what was the reason? I'm confused. How did they find out where you work? Who found out where you work? Who got you fired? And then he basically tells me that it's his ex who went viral. I'm sure someone messaged her and said where I worked, his license plumbing, uh, his plumbing license number. <laughs> this is what I text the man. This is, you know, the gold digger. Because typically when gold diggers can't dig anymore, they usually leave. They don't tell the the person to be careful they don't tell the person to lay low for a little bit because you just lost your job this is what you love to do 
lay low, figure out your next move, you know, see if you can get your job back. But instead of doing that, after that, he basically mentions how he's going to get private, you know, security, all of that. People kept coming at him asking for pictures, you know. Um, this is what I tell him. Make your page private and just wait a few days because it'll quiet down because people are bored. Okay? Still having his back. Even after everything he said about me, even after the interviews, etc. I ain't doing that. I left it at that. Literally left it at that. And then the interview comes out. Good morning. Hope you're fig figuring out the situation with your work. Is that interview getting taken down? Because I thought we were, I thought we were talking. Because he even asked me if you want that interview to be taken down. That recording that you recorded, sir, please post it. Please. Seriously. I'm begging you to post it. Because on that recording, we talked about getting that video taken down. <laughs> anyway, I basically explained to him why that interview was wrong. I explained to him that I'm talking, you know, with people that did not base, like the fact that they overstepped. Mm. And then the infamous GoFundMe. <laughs> Basically, I called him out and I was like, I joked about the percentage. I was like, yo, I better be getting a percentage off of them shirts because you're using my name. Typically, that's how business works, though. You know, you're not the only one that's business savvy here. If you're going to use my, use my name and my likeness. I better get paid. It's not gold digging. It's just being smart. I'm told that I had your whole convo recorded. So be cautious, God-fearing woman, calling a man feminine. Yes, I called Chandler a bit too feminine for my liking. And guess what I said? I meant what I said, respectfully. I didn't look at him as a potential person that I could date. I looked at him as a potential friend, and that's okay. Because this is a tug of war with a grown ass 30 year old. That's when I was blocked. Because I said, have fun. I, I, I'm coming to you as an adult, you know, having a conversation with you. But instead of that, I'm going to cook you next post. And cooking, he did. Because he went and posted a whole long ass video about me. Not video, but, well, the videos were posted already. Ask her, baby, or whatever. But that that's, how do you go from this? How do you go from this to I'm going to cook you next post in the span of one day? How? Didn't make sense to me because your record is public. The women are saying things. It's all there. So when I see all of this, instead of judging, I say, hey, cool it down a little bit, you know? Take, take it down. 
this is a lot on me, this is a lot on you. Even to that day, I was still trying to be cordial with him. Because at that point, I was like, yeah, this is the second he stormed off. I was already done. Completely done. But then he randomly called me out the blue. Because when I had reached out to him saying, we need to talk, I left my number there. That was when the first when he posted his first um, thing about me. Because then it, it, it goes on and on and on. Um, this girl on TikTok and Twitch and just the way, how cruel she was. You know, that was very disrespectful. We don't know you. We know this is your work. But there's a way to deliver a message where you don't put other women down, which you did. <sighs> what a long, and I mean long, um, segment on one individual who ultimately, it just comes to show that given, giving the wrong person a platform, this is what you get. Because how are you 30 years old? And I'm not saying that that's old. I'm just saying at some point in your life, you should know when enough is enough. Okay? You should just know when enough is enough. Um, but you're constantly trolling young women. Because it's not just me. But you expect them to what still find you as a good future husband or potential no that's not how that works i just want to end this um segment with i have no issue with you okay i have no issue with you whatsoever you are just a stranger that i met on a video if you and I had gone on a date and talked, I ain't gonna lie to you, it probably wouldn't have worked out. Because in one way or another, who you truly are would have still shown. I did all this stuff they accused me of, but nobody ever called the police. I never went to jail. To my black women out there, because this is something that I did one time, stop protecting your abuser. If the shoe fits, then it fits. I'm not calling him that. But if the shoe fits, then it fits. To the women that experienced everything that, you know, a lot of us saw out there now, I'm so sorry that you guys had to go through that. And if it is false, if it is all for clout, I'm sorry to you, Aaron Sloan, for not believing you. Okay, and God's going to take care of that. To um, Arlette and VM, thank you so much for the opportunity to be on your show. Thank you for the exposure, you know, because ultimately, I will say this again. Esther, why did you go on the show? To spread the word of God. To spread that Jesus is Lord and he loves you and he loves me and he doesn't require you to be perfect but he wants you to be righteous to all the ladies on there y'all are amazing y'all are beautiful keep being you let's all learn from this situation and hopefully use our platform for good and to empower other black women other black girls because they do watch us our family and friends, they do watch us. Our little siblings, they do watch us. And I want women to look 
at our video, you know, and look at us now. Because we all made a lot of mistakes on that video, yes. But look at us now and see, hey, this is someone that I can look up to. And to my future husband, I'm human. I'm not perfect. I don't fake it. I don't need to fake it. Okay? I went on the show because I thought that just maybe I could potentially meet somebody. And I may not have portrayed myself in the best light. And I apologize to you for that. I just hope that you don't use this one instance as an indicator, you know, that I'm not the one for you. I'm human. I still have a lot of maturing to do. I understand that. Okay? But I am learning every single day and you live and you learn and that's kind of what I try to live by. And to everyone that has been supporting me, thank you so much. I appreciate you all. My returning subscribers, shout out to y'all. You know, we're gonna try. I did have a GoFundMe out there, yes, because I ain't even using my phone to record this, <laughs> y'all. This is my phone. Yes, my screen protector is bad before y'all saw saying nothing. Um, storage situation, I've paid for storage. My phone has just been acting up. All of that, okay? I promise y'all, the platform that you guys have given me, I will use it for good. It's not about me, it's not about you, it's about God. And if you can use me, you know, I'm open to it, I'm willing to, because it is no longer I who lives, but Christ who lives within me. You can learn a bit more about me and my faith and my, you know, relationship with Christ on my TikTok. I will list that below in the description box. Um, my Instagram will be listed as well. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Sorry, this was so long. <laughs> one, last, one last thing. Yes, what's up? To all of the people on online who sit behind a screen and they watch everything and they come back with these comments about everyone on the show, everything that happened, you don't really know until now. You know her side. You don't know other people's side. You don't know how everybody else was looking at it. So before you sit and make comments, just think they're still human. And they still, Stop, you're gonna make And they still have a side to what happened. Mm, she's 14, y'all. So just be aware and use your words wisely. She's 14. <laughs> I love you. Love you too. Anyway. Um, we're gonna stop this now because it's um been forever it's been a long time and it's a long ass video i'm sorry i'm gonna try to make this <sighs> i don't know i just had a lot to say anyway have an amazing day thank you so much for watching don't forget to like comment and subscribe and i will see you in the next video remember to stay unfiltered you guys bye